Hello, I'm uh, Ian Mannion. I'm the Scientific Director for FRAME. And good morning and greetings from Canada. Thank you for your kind invitation to join you today for your launch of Science for Youth. What an exciting initiative. I'm sorry that I can't be with you there in person today, uh, but I would like to take this opportunity to give you a bit of a taste of youth engagement and its role in mental health research. Consider it a bit of an appetizer for the banquet that awaits you over the course of the next several months. So at this point, I'd like to walk you through a few slides that will describe some of the work that we've been doing in meaningful youth engagement in mental health research. In this first slide, and you've probably heard this sentence before, nothing about us without us. This is what young people, what families, what people with lived experience have told us again and again, that they, that's what they aspire to. That if we are doing research about them, we should be including them in everything that we do. So why are we moving to patient-oriented research? Why is this a movement that we're seeing around the world right now? There is increasing evidence that actually when you engage patients or young people or families uh, in research, that the research itself benefits from it, but also those that are engaged in meaningful ways have benefits uh, personally from their involvement. We also know that increasingly now funders, be they national, international funders, are requiring us to actively engage patients in the work that we're doing. We've seen this in Canada. There's a very large movement towards patient-oriented research with significant funding uh, depending on the level to which you can engage uh, patients in significant ways in the research. Also, we know it just makes sense. Uh, for the kind of validity that we need to really translate our research work into practical implications for care, especially in mental health. Uh, how can we even hope to do that without including those that we are trying to help in the first place? Unfortunately, uh, we know also that the engagement of youth in research is lagging behind somewhat compared to what we have seen with the adult population. So when I mention youth engagement, what are the, some of the key ingredients? Uh, what am I really talking about here? Uh, it, it involves a number of different things. First of all, it, it's creating opportunities for young people to be involved in many ways. Now, I'm talking generally here, not just about research. It could be involved in their community. It could be involved in decision making on a number of levels. Uh, it's it, developing partnerships that are authentic with decision makers with clinicians, with researchers, with policymakers, but it's really recognizing that youth engagement is not just a program. It's not just something that you do. It's something that you are. It's how you are. It's a culture shift that's required to actually do this properly. There have been some guiding principles that have been advanced in terms of youth engagement. First and foremost, we have to view youth as experts on being youth. They know more about youth than we do. So as such, they are assets uh, and their expertise has to be valued and respected. It also involves shared decision making, where young people are involved in uh, setting the course of the work that we're doing. The relationships have to be authentic uh, as opposed to uh, top-down. Uh, in that regard, we're also looking and striving for health equity, uh, re realizing that youth are not all the same and there's diversity among youth and we have to be prepared to capture that diversity in whatever we're trying to do when we're meaningfully engaging young people. We have to understand that young people are coming from different places. We are not trying to have them elevate themselves to a level that we think is appropriate, but rather we have to meet youth where they're at, starting from that point. And whenever, whenever we are engaging young people, we need to do this in a very safe way, cognizant of what their needs are, but some of their vulnerabilities as well. To look at this, that, that culture shift that I was referring to before, you can look at the, the shift that is required on the part of the young person, but also on the part of the adult that might be engaging young people. So uh, if you look at the research community, for example, when we talk about youth mental health research, at one extreme, we are looking at youth as the target of our research the subject, so to speak, of our research. And we are the ones that are driving it as adults uh, that may or may not be in touch with the needs of that target audience. As we move up the scale, uh, sometimes we view youth as a resource, uh, maybe uh, participants in our research, maybe gaining uh, 
insights from them through focus group activity. And, and here, uh, the adults are viewed as still in the lead, uh, perhaps advising to a certain extent. Uh, this has also been labeled pizza research or pizza engagement because young people are often paid by being served pizza or a meal as the only form of remuneration that they receive. Further up, now we view youth as resources where they're actually participating, but probably in a volunteer capacity, where the assumption is that they gain much more out of the experience and they should be happy just participating as a volunteer. Uh, the potential here, though, is for adults to serve as mentors, to begin uh, a process where they're sharing knowledge, sharing experiencing experiences, and developing skills in the young people. Perhaps what we're really aspiring to, though, is that final stage where youth are viewed as decision makers, equal partners, agents of social change. And adults in this regard are allies, are guides, are coaches in lifelong learning, helping the generation of youth become policymakers, clinicians, or in our case, researchers. I love this quote. It can be argued that knowledge creation about young people that does not involve young people could be perceived as incomplete or lacking in real world val validity. If we are talking about research now, where do we see the potential for meaningful youth engagement in our research? And I've written down some of the places here where we can consider involving youth, and each one can be done at different levels. But the front end of research, how are we involving young people to set the research agenda, to identify research questions that are of relevance to them? To what extent are we involving them in our methodology? Uh, do our designs resonate with young people? Uh, do they make sense? Uh, will they be able to engage young people both in the process but in also the outcome of research? Are we involving them in PAR or participatory action research where the research that we're doing is with them and on them at the same time? Are they helping us identify what the constructs are of most interest and what are the actual measures that we should be using to capture those constructs? Uh, are we having them help us understand who should be part of our research? How can young people help us engage other young people as participants in the research, either as research subjects, uh, respondents, sources of, of a rich array of information? You can also be involved in data collection. They can be peer researchers. We know that young people will talk to peers in ways they will never talk to an adult. If that's the case, why aren't we engaging young people, training them as data collectors, being able to collect data, analyze data, and interpret what it means in their own context. Finally, uh, and perhaps more importantly, we are learning that youth are key in knowledge translation, in impacting change, in making sure that the evidence that we're creating actually can have a fundamental impact on policy practice and future research. So as such, they should be involved in carving out the messages that are shared with others, co-presenting that information whenever possible. Uh, if we do all this, we have to also realize that the decisions about each one of these steps or the research governance piece should also involve young people. So in this regard, we are thinking of youth as co-researchers, not research assistants. People that we are sharing decision making um, uh, and, and, and sharing the entire experience from beginning to end. I have put a, a number of, of uh, benefits and challenges that have been identified in the research. I'm not going to go through all of these, but just a few uh, that I'm going to highlight for you. Uh, the research questions become, I think, richer. Uh, the validity of what we're doing becomes uh, more relevant. Uh, there are clear benefits to the young person themselves. We know that when young people are engaged in meaningful ways, uh, they are healthier physically, healthier emotionally, their self-esteem goes up, it can help with their career trajectories. We also know that there are benefits in terms of narrowing the research to practice gap because the research that we do will be much more applied and relevant in nature and much more likely to change things much quicker in the lives of young people. And finally, if we're involving young people as co-researchers, giving them the appropriate skills, 
uh, uh, to do research, we're actually building capacity in our research community. Challenges? Well, again, there are many here. This requires a lot of change management, not necessarily on the part of the young people. Often, more often than not, actually, it takes more change management on the part of researchers who are not used to doing this, who are very uh, tied to uh, tradition and what they view as the way you should be doing research and the hierarchies that exist in that. There are costs in terms of doing this. You have to support young people to do it well. Uh, you have to be prepared to engage a variety of different young people so that you can really cover the diversity that is youth. Being able to identify youth, but also keeping them involved in meaningful ways can be a challenge. Uh, we have to be careful that we don't have any negative side effects of their involvement, especially in youth mental health research. Some of the young people that we're working with uh, that are engaging in research may themselves be triggered by some of the questions we're asking uh, or the topics we're investigating. And we have to have safety nets in place so they can still be involved without being triggered in any way. So if you look at this as a process, think about where you currently are at in your organization, on your research team. Um, to what extent are you currently involving young people? What is your environment like? What is the culture like? Uh, then start thinking about how would you modify that environment? in terms of physical space, in terms of processes, in terms of attitudes, so that when youth are beginning to become involved in your research, it's a positive experience. Then it's the big challenge of, of identifying the youth and getting them on board, making it a win-win situation, maintaining their interests so that they feel that they're actually going somewhere. And one thing you're going to realize that young people are very impatient. Uh, they want to get going, they want to move, they want to make things happen quickly. Not always consistent with the research process where there are multiple approvals and ethics reviews uh, and partners to, to, to keep involved. And finally, uh, one should consider evaluating the process that you have established for youth engagement. Help all of us in terms of growing the literature about how to do this properly. So the Ontario Centre of Excellence for Child and Youth Mental Health has created a, a toolbox around these issues. Uh, they have actually uh, organized the thinking uh, around the value of positive youth development in, in care, but also in research. And they talk about that co-activate, uh, uh, about co-activation, co-creation and co-evaluation. Co-activation is that early stage where you're setting the preconditions to make it work, uh, the change readiness piece. Uh, preparing your key players to understand how they have to change to make things work with young people. The co-creation stage is where you are actually engaging with young people as partners, as co-researchers, uh, where you are identifying the questions, implementing the research. And then the co-evaluation is where you are looking at what you have created, uh, what the impact of that is, and how can you improve that, probably in a continuous improvement cycle. There are a number of practical considerations to do this well. And, and I believe that uh, where you folks are starting is actually that very first part, part. How do you create greater research literacy or mental health research literary, literacy in young people? Science for Youth is all about that. What are some of the core skills that young people can be trained in to give them the capacity to make a positive and significant contribution to any research project? project? What's the code of conduct? What are the rules of engagement? And I suggest you have them written down. How should the researchers behave? What are the expectations of youth? Uh, you should be discussing issues such as remuneration and recognition. Uh, will youth be paid for their involvement as researchers? Well, you're paid as, re as researchers yourselves. Uh, what's the value added for the young person? Sometimes that remuneration could be in the form of authorship. Will you include youth as authors on your papers? And if no, why not? Think about co-presenting result findings uh, with young people. We have learned from policymakers that they want to meet the young people. They want to hear the stories matched with the evidence to make a compelling case to change policy and practice. Clear roles and responsibilities about who's going to be doing what, when, and what's the standard expected for every step. How will you foster that culture shift in your organization? How will you hold meetings? Where will you hold meetings? When will you hold meetings? Is it a time where it's difficult for young people to engage? 
What's your language going to be during these meetings? Your messaging. How will you create meaningful time for young people's voices to be heard? What's your role as a supportive leader? How will you view young people as a responsibility on your part? And you can make a fundamental contribution to their early development and their early research development. Change management for the entire organization. Do you have policies and procedures that will make it difficult for young people to engage? Uh, sometimes a review of that can be quite revealing. In our own organization, we realized that we, we thought we were very progressive until we realized that our financial uh, requirements made it hard for us to actually remunerate youth or even pay for their participation in terms of covering meals and transportations and things like that. We had to change our organizational policies to make that happen. A funding to support engagement, we now build in a component of every budget to support meaningful youth engagement, to be able to hire uh, youth as research assistants, to facilitate their travel, uh, to uh, um, uh, provide them some form of remuneration. And finally, career coaching. It should be an ongoing process. Uh, it's, the project is important, but the long-term trajectory of these young people in terms of their research careers may be actually the, the, the silver lining in all of this. So I'd like to give you a few examples of, of work that we've been doing. Uh, this, is, uh, this picture is actually of a, uh, the International Initiative for Mental Health Leadership that was held in Stockholm uh, earlier this year. Uh, we strategically uh, involved uh, leaders in youth mental health care and in research along with young people themselves. There were actually more young people than there were adults. And we looked at such, such issues as the role of youth engagement in policy, practice, and research. Uh, and it was quite eye-opening. And it was fun too, I think you can tell that from this picture. As I mentioned at the very beginning, I'm the scientific director of FRAME. FRAME is an international uh, knowledge e uh, translation and exchange network uh, with a, a clear focus on integrated youth mental health care. We are really trying to uh, find out what we already know about youth mental health care and make better use of it. So part of our work is around identifying evidence synthesizing that evidence. It's uh, translating that evidence into ways that can uh, uh, facilitate uptake in real life contexts uh, and have that stick through supporting that uh, implementation of practices and scale up of practices across systems. We can't do this without ongoing partnerships, without a commitment to ongoing evaluation. So that's really the, the role of FRAME. Uh, we have a leadership team which is international in nature. Uh, many of the people on, on this particular slide are actually also leaders in youth engagement internationally. And, and we're thrilled to have such committed individuals uh, leading our network. It's a large network. We have uh, over uh, 200 partners in over 10 countries uh, representing uh, participants and stakeholders from over 25 universities. Uh, this is a quick look at our board of directors. We have a youth advisory committee that's called AIM, the advisory that you, on youth matters multiple funders who also all um, really embrace uh, the commitment that we have to meaningful youth engagement. We also have a family advisory that we believe is as important as our youth advisory in terms of bringing that important perspective to all of our work. So this slide gives you a bit of a taste of our governance structure and I, and I think that's important because first of all we do have that advisory group of youth uh, but that's insufficient. To have a, a group that just gives us information is important, but insufficient. We have a youth representation. Actually, we have two youth members on our board of directors, and they're involved in all the decision making. We have a knowledge mobilization committee that are both content and process experts from around the world in terms of, of uh, and, uh, youth mental health, implementation science, uh, knowledge mobilization. And we have two, actually we now have three youth leads as part of that knowledge mobilization committee. That committee is the one that makes decisions about funding. So youth have direct impact on who gets funded to do what project as part of our network. Finally, in terms of terms of reference for our youth advisory, those were completely developed by young people. And you see that on the right hand side. It's not intended for, to be something that you can read, uh, but uh, uh, tools like this uh, I'll be more than happy to make available to you so that you can see what's possible in your own context. 
When uh, I started doing work in youth engagement, it was in the early 90s, and it really wasn't cool to talk about youth engagement back then. And when we started, uh, the building that our program was in was in a condemned building, and the chief financial officer of our organization, this was a quote from him, if these were kids in my neighborhood, I would tell them to go play somewhere else. That was not meaningful youth engagement. Youth uh, were very quick to point out what uh, someone would look like if they were not youth friendly, to the point where they actually painted a mural in our boardroom of this individual that would talk at youth and tell youth what was uh, important to have happen. And uh, this was just not acceptable. And uh, at, at this program, at the YouthNet program, our board, uh, our, our working table, our, our, our key players, our, 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 our team essentially included nine people. Seven of them were youth, only two of them were adults. Uh, we were constantly outnumbered and glad that we were. So this is uh, YouthNet Réseau Ado today. Uh, it is an organization for young people, by young people, all about youth mental health, mental health promotion. Uh, they are uh, involved in research. Uh, research touches everything that they do. There is information and data gathered on every aspect of the program. The director of research uh, for this program uh, up until recently was a 19-year-old. And uh, she's now 22 and she's gone on to graduate school. Uh, but he, she's the author of this research report and I had the privilege of being her research mentor, uh, help guiding her, not direct her guiding her as she set the tone for what was important to be researched by YouthNet. Uh, the McCain Center for Child and Youth and Family Health at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health has a very significant initiative going on uh, in terms of youth engagement. Uh, they call it YAPS or Youth Adult Partnerships and this is their model where they see different levels or number of youth that are involved uh, for different aspects of their program. From a knowledge sharing perspective, that's the largest audience. But when it comes down to the decision making, it's a smaller group of youth uh, that are involved in that uh, at a leadership level. Uh, they have published extensively on the work that they've done in engaging youth in research. Here's a, a reference in particular. They also have a number of tools that I'm sure that you can have access to that talks about the do's and don'ts of youth engagement, both in a research context, but also uh, in a clinical context. So if there's some take home messages from what I've tried to convey to you very briefly today, is that think about engaging young people at the very front end of your research. Uh, be thoughtful in the young people that you engage. Realize that not all young people are the same. Be deliberate and generate, generous and genuine and strategic in inviting youth in and doing it in a way that makes sense for them, not just sense for you. Be prepared to co-create in planning the projects, in doing them, in sharing the information and sustaining the products of that information. Think about who will be facilitating this in your organization. Clearly your researchers have a role, but who is a go-to person across research projects? Will you have coaches or advisors or a key support person to facilitate youth engagement across your organization? We have found that having that go-to person is key but we've also gone one step further. In hiring that person, we have youth as part of the interview team to help us decide who would be the best fit to meet their needs. Think about how you are constantly sustaining those relationships. How do you profile the partnership? How do you celebrate successes? How do you uh, 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 highlight the role of young people in the work that they are doing? I went to a presentation once where the researcher talked about how they meaningfully engaged young people and they had three young people stand behind them while they presented the entire time. That was window dressing. That was not meaningful engagement. Interestingly, the presentation right after that was also about meaningful youth engagement and research. Three youth presented and the adult researcher stood behind them. That is probably what we should be aspiring to. Finally, evaluate everything that you do, and not just in the research project, but in the process of engaging young people in your research projects. So this is a bit of a warning. This is messy business. You're gonna to have to be prepared to step outside of your comfort zone. If you're a researcher, you're gonna find yourself making compromises that you're not sure about initially. You will have some false starts. 
you will have some young people that will be superstars and others that will require a lot more of your attention to move them closer to the skills that you want them to have as emerging mental health researchers. If you are prepared to take the risk, you will definitely benefit from the time and effort you've put into this. So I've listed here some of the key resources uh, where you can go and have access to more tools, more publications uh, on everything that I've said here. And um, uh, there's a virtual treasure trove of, of information here. And I really uh, hope that you take a chance to uh, uh, take a look at some of these. Uh, there's no way that can do justice to the work of, of so many of my wonderful colleagues who are really setting the tone for what mental health research should look like uh, when you in young, involve young people. I hope that this has given you a, a bit of information that you can digest and dive deeper into over time. Uh, I do hope that I get the opportunity to meet you all in person at some point. In the meantime, I'm more than happy to assist you in any way possible with this very important initiative. Best of luck as you embark on this exciting journey. It should be fun, but I know it's going to be meaningful.